Hey, Garbagus is coming along. I actually have been doing a lot of reading, um, enough to split it up into more than one video a week, I think. So what I'm reading right now is not this, but it's related to this. This is a character. This is a 1974 uh, Marvel Comics character called, oops, I always call him Kazar. Maybe it's Kazar. Maybe it's Kazar. Lord of the something. Lord of the Hidden Land. Uh, return to a Savage Land. This is a character that I, I knew at the time was based on an old pulp and obviously a Tarzan ripoff character. This character has a, a lot more interesting history than than the book I read about him. That's for sure. Uh, this character right here, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in the 60s as a guest star in X-Men 10, I think, doing all this. I looked it all up yesterday, but I'm not going to double check it. Um, is a jungle lord type guy raised by animals. You can see a dinosaur, a saber-toothed tiger. Savage Land is a reference to an underworld, a Pellucidar-like place that this character is uh, marooned in. So it's really a, a mixture of Tarzan and uh, Pellucidar, two different Burroughs series. Uh, this is not how the character originated, though. He was originally a pulp character. He had his own magazine in the 30s three entire issues of a pulp character ripoff of uh, one of many many ripoffs of Tarzan that appeared in the pulp era uh, he had uh, a, a magazine that lasted three issues over about nine months um, and I'm looking for the cover of the first issue which is what I read I found on Project Gutenberg Australia not projectgutenberg.org, but projectgutenbergaustralia.org or com or something, which uh, is one of many Project Gutenbergs around the country. The reason, uh, around the world, the reason there's more than one is different countries have different copyright issues. I don't believe this book is available on the American site. 1939, it's probably still under copyright, especially since there's a Marvel Comics character based on this character. The, the cover I showed you before was a 70s revival of a character that had been, like I say, in the... Oh, man, I hope I have a cover here. Maybe I didn't get it. I'm going to have to pause again, aren't I? Yeesh. Uh, I know I, I saved the cover somewhere of the pulp magazine. And I'm going to go look for it. Okay, so this is the original... Kazar pulp magazine cover. Uh, the first novel is called King of Fang and Claw by Bob Bird. I can find nothing out about Bob Bird uh, by looking at Wikipedia. This interesting uh, character though, what this was, was a character designed, I don't know if it's created by Bob Bird, and then uh, you know, or, or assigned to him by the editor because this magazine was published by uh, uh, Martin Goodman, who owned a small, who owned a magazine publishing group, a pulp magazine group. He also published comic books, including a very famous comic book called Marvel Comics which was the birth of the Marvel Comics group back in 1939. So after running three issues of this, it did not sell very well. It was adapted into a serial in Marvel Comics, and the character appeared in an issue of the Human Torch also in, 19, in the early 1940s. Uh, and then later, Kirby and Lee, uh, you know, looking to revive old characters brought him back brought a version of the character back in the 70s the original character was a straight up tarzan ripoff it was not a tarzan of pellucidar ripoff uh, because his or he just is marooned in africa in this book 
Now the version I read from Project Gutenberg Australia has got to be one of the worst formatted uh, free books I've ever gotten. But you know, beggars can't be choosers. Probably illegal for me to have it anyway. This is the cover of the version I downloaded from Project Gutenberg Australia a couple years ago. You can see, if you can see there, this is a, this is a generic caliber uh, cover, meaning somebody uh, had a version of this that, that they converted themselves by using the Caliber app, the free uh, ebook conversion app, and uh, uploaded it to Project Gutenberg Australia. That's your choice of typeface. I'll skip to the text here. You can see it's just horrible formatting where the line breaks are wherever the line breaks are going to be. Sometimes they're in the middle of a word. Uh, you know, sometimes the, the punctuation is cut off and dropped off on the next line, whatever. It was still pretty easy to read and fairly entertaining. It's a bizarre story. Uh, imitated, taken mostly from Tarzan, a little bit from Jungle, a uh, little bit from the Jungle Book, um, or maybe just taken from Tarzan of the Apes by way of the, or taken from the Jungle Book by way of Tarzan of the Apes, because Burroughs borrowed a lot from the Jungle Book too. Uh, the first chapter starts out. A character named Czar, Czar the Lion. Bit of a spoiler. If, it, if the book's called Kazar, Lord of the Beasts, and you know there's a uh, there's a there's an adult lion named Czar in the first chapter, uh, an anthropomorphized lion who's uh, the point of view character at the beginning of the book. Imagine that Kazar is going to be adopted or something somehow by Czar. Anyway, Czar the Lion observes this. Uh, plane crash in the jungle uh, there are two survive there are three survivors uh, husband and wife and their three-year-old child so you can see where this is going to go um, it's an updating you know Tarzan uh, of the Apes was from I believe they are in the originally set in the 1880s where uh, John Clayton or Tarzan's parents uh, the Claytons are marooned uh, by pirates and try to survive in the wilderness. So in this, they, they, the parents crash a plane. We don't really know very much about their background. We never learned anything about their background, at least in the one book I read. They have a three-year-old son, so he's old enough to speak a little bit. Uh, the mother dies in the first chapter, which sends the father insane. He... Uh, but he doesn't die. He continues raising the kid in a very strange way. A lot of this is told from the point of view of the lion. The different uh, jungle animals are, like I said, anthropomorphized. You know, we get some of their point of views of seeing these strange uh, human characters, which they'd never seen before. The, the father takes a very interesting approach to his son after the mother dies in that he teaches him to read and write which is covered in one sentence. Uh, about eight years pass, or no, I guess five years pass till the kid's about eight. He teaches them how to read and write. Somehow decides never to teach him anything about the outside world, so I don't know what he was training him to write on because uh, the little kid, um, I forget his name, it doesn't matter. It's going to be called Kazar eventually. Spoiler alert. It never learns about other people, other human beings, other white people, or other people of any race. Uh, you know, doesn't understand what a plane crash is, just thinks they live in the jungle and that they're the only non, uh, and that they're similar to the other animals. He's, from the age of three, he's very comfortable with, uh, other an with the other animals and is friendly with them and that kind of thing, which is something his father... Um, remarks on he so he's uh, I don't know the reasons for that other than the fact that he has to be a jungle wild man with no knowledge of the real of the outside world for the purposes of the plot but he also the author wanted him to have some kind of intelligence and 
whatever. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. The lion czar is helping them live by bringing them, you know, hunting for them and leaving antelope and things like that. So the father eventually also dies, uh, and some outsiders come to the uh, portion of the jungle. They're looking for jewels that are mined there, and. And uh, the great white hunter guy, who's the villain, kills the father. And uh, but as the father's dying, he tells his son, "You must protect this lamb from these evil outsiders, because this is where your mother is buried, and this is sacred to us." So that's what the kid knows. He is then adopted. He's not adopted by the lion. He's made the brother of the lion. K. K K or Ka means brother of Zar, so he's the brother of Zar, he's not the son of Zar, he's not adopted by the lions. So I guess the thinking here was, I have to have a human around to teach him stuff because the lion really can't raise a human um, the way the apes could in Tarzan, or something, I don't know. It, it's, it's five years in about 50 pages. Then... Uh, he Kezar and gathers the animals and he starts to dominate the animals and he gets the apes the gorillas to submit to him and he's becoming the lord of the jungle and then fights off the evil uh hunters or, or my fortune hunters i guess since they're looking for jewels they don't get the jewels they leave after killing Kezar's real father and then five more years go by. This is all in, in one novel. It's pretty short. It's probably like a hundred. It's I would say it's shorter than a Doc Savage novel or, or Shadow. It's that kind of era. Another five years go by. They they plan another uh, foray to go back to the same place in the jungle and fight this one weird white guy who lives there, Kazar, um, and get all the emeralds and jewels out of that jungle that they want. Uh, by this time, Kazar's 13. He's absolutely lord of the jungle. He's the brother of the lion. They're best friends. He's friendly with all the lion and the the lady lion. I forget her name. And their cubs. And <coughs> they're all happy and playing in the jungle, waiting for the the evil um, interlopers to come back and try to steal the jewels again, which they try and do. Spoiler alert. Uh, Kazar is able to kill them in the end and avenge his birth father and I assume have more adventures. So the, the actual plot, the, other than the origin story about how he's raised in the jungle by himself by, and animals, um, which is stolen from Tarzan, the, the, the secondary plot of these people come in and they want to despoil the jungle and all that is really sort of ripped off more from Tarzan movies of the time, these are the kind of plots that would happen in the all, many, many Tarzan movies, Johnny Weissmuller movies, and that kind of thing, all the way through the, the Ron Ely series. So, um, kept me reading, it was very, uh, uh, it was uneven, but it kept me, kept me reading, you know, it's a long origin story, it takes place over Ten years, I guess, because he's thirteen at the end. He's a three-year-old when he's marooned there. That's not really like a prologue. That's about the first third of the book. And one thing you can really get out of this book is what a great writer Edgar Rice Burroughs is, because there is so much more thought and depth and characterization in the Tarzan books, especially the early Tarzan books, than there is in this. Kazar's doesn't have much of a personality. None of the characters do, except the father is kind of a, who goes crazy and acts irrationally. He's kind of interesting that way. And the villains are one-dimensional. Everything's one-dimensional because there really never has any curiosity about the outside world, even after he defeats these uh, people who want to steal jewels, which I don't even remember now if he even realized what they were there. He's just He just wants them gone because... He doesn't want anybody in this sacred land that his mother is buried in, and also uh, they killed his father, so it's a revenge thing. And then he goes back to being, and then I guess there were two more ep issues after that where he maybe he has some other adventures. But I've always been curious about it because 
I remember the the character from Marvel Comics when I was growing up, and I knew that there were some differences. I knew he was conceived as a pulp character, but I didn't realize how many of the elements of that 70s series were taken from other Edgar Rice Burroughs stories, dinosaurs, prehistoric under underground creatures made it much more interesting. I probably, and that's why I assumed this was going to be, I didn't know this was just going to be a straight uh, guy in a loincloth without really any characterization or anything. So there wasn't a lot to go on there, but it was, which made it perfect for Garb August. You know, it was just a, a book that somebody put out hoping to cash in on Tarzan, apparently, according to Wikipedia, there are a lot of these characters. I couldn't find a list of them, but they uh, very often with this kind of name, you know, you could kind of see how that evokes um, Tarzan. A lot of these names start with K, I guess. And, and, you know, and instead of Lord of the Jungle, he's King of Fang and Claw. So that was that. I wouldn't really recommend uh, going out of your way for... Uh, to look for it on Project Gutenberg Australia or any place else but if you find it it's not that uh, it's not worth looking for but it's you know it's okay it's Garb August and I've uh, read some other books in uh, different series I talked about before but I'll go over those in a different video thank you all we'll, t we'll talk later if I can shut this off